Hi guys, welcome back to our second lesson in our decimals topic. Today we are going to be looking at rounding decimals. So we're learning how to round to the nearest whole number and then we're going to look at to one decimal place. Your success criteria for today then is I have been successful if I can use my rules for rounding to round to the nearest whole number and use those same rules to round to one decimal place. So a quick reminder from our previous rounding lessons. Remember, the number we are looking at comes after the place value we're interested in. So if the number we are looking at is 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4, that tells us that the number we're rounding to is going to stay the same. And 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9 tells us that we are going to round up to the next number. So here we are going to round the following numbers to the nearest whole number. So the first one I want to round here is my 8.3. Now, if we have a look along the bottom, I've got 10 boxes with 8 at one end and 9 at the other. So 8.3 is going to be roughly about here for me on my diagram. Now, as we can see, I'm much closer to 8 than I am to 9. So rounding to the nearest whole number then is going to be 8. 8.8, however, is going to be here on our diagram. And I hope you can all agree with me that that is much closer to 9. So we would round 8.8 .8 up to 9. And that's what I was talking about here. Our whole number then would be our units. So we are looking at our tenths. 8 is greater than 5. So we are rounding that 8 up to a 9. 8.4 then. That's at this box here. And again, it's much closer to 8 than it is to 9. So that is going to be 8. And then 8.5, that one's right in the middle, but we always say that we round up when it's a 5. So 5 is telling me to round that 8 up to a 9. Here we've got two decimal places and we are still going to round the following numbers to their nearest whole number. So the whole number this time, our numbers here are between 12 and 13. 12.75 well, 12.7 would be here, so I want to be halfway in between 12.7 and 12.8 for 12.75. And I hope we can see here that we are much closer to 13. So it is still this number here that I'm looking at that is telling me whether I'm going up or staying the same. So 12 is going to become 13. Because it's a whole number, I haven't put any points or any numbers after my units here. There's no decimal point, no zeros, just the nearest whole number. 12.28, well, 12.1, 12.2, so 12.28 is probably somewhere about here. And I hope we can all agree that that is much closer to 12. So this 2 is telling us to keep our 12 the same. 12.82 uh, is going to be somewhere about here. 8, 2. So that is closer to 13. And again, 8 to tell us to round up. And my 12.09 here, I need to be careful. Remember, it's still this 0 that I'm looking at. 12.09 is going to be roughly about here. So that is much closer to 12. So 0 tells us to keep our 12 the same. Okay, I would like you guys to pause the video and try these four examples yourself and then I'll go through the answers with you once you've tried them. Okay, hopefully we paused the video and gave that a go. Well, the 7 is the one that's telling me whether I'm staying the same or rounding up. 24 is either going to stay at 24 or go up to 25. 7 tells me to round up, so I'm rounding up to 25 here. 0.37, well my whole numbers that's between are 0 and 1. 0 is still a whole number, yeah, you can have 0 of something or 1 of something. So 0 0.37, well 3 is the one that's telling me whether I'm rounding up or staying the same, and I'm just going to stay the same at 0. That's the closest whole number. 5.633, well I'm either staying at 5 or rounding up to 6. 6 tells me to round up, so it's just going to be 6. 
and then 712.712, well it's this 7 here that's telling me whether I'm rounding up or staying the same. We round up, so the whole numbers that it's between are 712 and 713, so we need to go up to 713 for our answer there. Hopefully we got all four of those correct. Now we are going to use the calculator to solve and round these to the nearest whole number. So 12 times by 3.14, that should give me 37.68. And then we've been asked to round it to the nearest whole number. So doing the same as last time, my 6 is the one that tells me whether we're rounding up or staying the same. 6 tells me to round up. So that is going to become 38. Now, when you are given a question like this and it asks you to round, we always show our unrounded answer first. So I would expect to see this line and then you write in your final answer to show me what our final answer would be. Okay, 7 divided by 3 then gives me 2.333. So 2.333. And then I'm just going to put a wee dot, dot, dot to show that that 333 is recurring. It just keeps going on and on and on. That 3 is telling us whether we round up or stay the same. Well, we're just going to stay the same at 2. Four point five times by six point seven seven. Well, that gives me thirty point four six five. Okay, and then that four is telling us whether we round up or stay the same. Well, we're just going to stay the same at thirty. So now we are going to look at rounding to one decimal place, and I have asked us to find the value of the arrows first. Now we can see here that I've got twenty boxes. And I've got 8.2, 8.3 and 8.4 marked on. So I've got 10 boxes between 8.2 and 8.3. So I know that each of these boxes is going to be worth 0 0.01 this time. Our first arrow is 4 boxes up from 8.2. So that should be 8.24. Our next one then is another 4 boxes up from that. So it should be 8.28. And then our last one is three boxes up from 8.3, so it should be 8.33. Is 8.24 nearer to 8.2 or 8.3? So if we're just looking at that first half of these boxes here, we can see that our first arrow is much closer to 8.2 than 8.3. So our answer then is going to be 8.2. Is 8.28 nearer to 8.2 or 8.3? Well, we can see it's much closer to 8.3. And then lastly, is 8.33 nearer to 8.3 or 8.4? Well, we can see that on this half, our 8.33 is closer to 8.3 than 8.4. So we are just going to use the same rules as last time. And when we are rounding to one decimal place, we are looking at our second decimal place. And that is telling us whether to round up or stay the same. So like I've just said there, same rules before. If the second decimal place is 0, 1, 2, 3 or 4, then our first decimal place stays the same. If the second decimal place is 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, then the first decimal place will round up to the next number. Last six examples, I want you guys to pause and have a go, see if you can try these ones and then come back for the answers. Okay, so we are rounding to one decimal place. So I'm looking at my second decimal place. Five tells me to round up, so this answer here is going to become 6.2. For the next one, 0 0.37, well, it's the 7 that I'm looking at. 3 is going to have to round up to 0 0.4. This time I've got three decimal places, but I'm still only looking at the first one. So going to our next decimal place is this 3 here. That tells me to stay the same, so my answer is 5.6.
187.901, well, my second decimal place is the zero. That tells us to stay the same, so it's just 187. 187.9. 10.999, well, I'm looking at this middle nine here for our second decimal place. That tells me that I would round my nine up. Well, if nine goes up one, that would become 10. So 10 is going to become 11 here. And it's one decimal place. And do we notice how I have one number after my decimal place each time? So I'm going to fill in with a point, with a point zero, so that I've got one number after my decimal place here. Last one, 314.159805 tells me to round up. So that's going to be 314. Point two. So each time here, I have got one digit after my decimal point because it is to one decimal place. And that is you finished with the notes portion today. Again, I've used our chili rating method here. So I expect every single person to be able to do mild and I expect us to be able to give the medium ones a good go. They're just a wee bit more challenging. For each of these, you probably won't need to show as much working. Apart from when you get to question six, you will want to lay out with your answer using the calculator and then rounding. But for all of these other questions, you can just write down your final answer. That's all that my answers tomorrow will have. For the hot ones, again, you will want to write down your sum, calculate an answer and then round it. Now, if you look carefully at all eight of these questions, it's mixed between whole number and one decimal place. So make sure you read these questions carefully and check what they are asking for. Try your best. Any problems? pop a wee message into our Teams chat and I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Good luck and I'll see you in the next one.